Japan. Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Japandi, I'm gonna take you to the Gundam Factory here in Yokohama. Coming up. Tickets are less than $16 for 13 and up, and less than $11 for kids 7 to 12 years old. Kids 6 and under get in for free, but is limited to 3 kids. Gundam Factory Yokohama is located near the iconic Landmark Tower and Minato Mirai, next to Yamashita Park. Did you know that this Gundam is powered by wind? Here you can see the schedule of events for the day. We'll be seeing the full version of Awakening. Around the Gundam dock, there are all kinds of interesting things to see that are Gundam related, including schematics for the RX-78 F00 HMT, high mobility type, which is the model name of the factory's titular Gundam. You can also get tickets to the Gundam Dock, located six stories high, to take close-up pictures, but it's first come first serve, so get your tickets quickly. I'd love to play for you the audio of Awakening, but due to the copyrighted music used, this video would get copy struck faster than you can say Shining Finger, so instead, please enjoy this copyright friendly music instead, and let the show begin.
So yeah guys, that was the Gundam factory out here in Yokohama. And with that said, this is Andy. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Hey guys, Andy here. And today, I'm out here at Kamakura. Coming up. Hey guys, Andy here. So today's Andy Japan video is going to be a bit of a quickie. So I discovered something very recently about uh, 500 yen coins. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So here I have three generations of 500 yen coins. I got this one on the left from a Chinese bento shop. And when I grabbed it, I noticed it was significantly lighter in color and in weight than the typical 500 yen coins. So at first I thought it was counterfeit and I was just kind of looking at it like, what the heck? But I did some research and turns out it's just uh, from the Showa era. After doing some research, also found that I had two other coins, one from the Heisei era and one from the Reiwa era, which is the current era. Figured out exactly the years that these coins were minted. So the 500 yen coin, right? And you'll notice that it has, or it doesn't have the full grooved printing on the inside that the, uh, other 500 yen coins have it's just on the sides you also notice it's much lighter in color it looks kind of like a goldish silver and one of the other interesting bits is that on the inside i don't know if you can see that there but it says 500 and then you turn it nippon or japan and aside from the lettering it's smooth it has a little diamond in between as well so i saw that and i was just kind of like what the heck is this so I had to do some research and it turns out it's just a really old coin. <laughs> so this one is from the Showa era and how you can tell is from the kanji here. So this is Showa, the first two kanji. And then you have here the kanji for five, the kanji for 10 and the kanji for seven. So put that all together. It is the 57th year of Showa, which is 1982 by the standard Gregorian calendar. And then moving on over to the Heisei coin right here. It's pretty much identical to the Reiwa coin, but we'll just go over the kanji here. So we have here Heisei, and then the kanji for two, then 10, and then three. So put those together, it's Heisei year 23, which is 2011 in the Gregorian calendar. And then we move on to the Reiwa coin right here, the most current one. So we have Reiwa, and then year three, which was just last year, 2021. So I think that's pretty interesting that I had literally three generations of 500 yen coins just sitting in my wallet and I didn't even know about it. And uh, wouldn't you know it, just have a little bit of history in your pocket. So I just thought it was a fun, short little video just to share with you guys. So with that said, this is Andy, sign up for now. And as always, and forever, see you next time. Bye guys. This is the part you guys have been waiting for. I hereby confer upon you, members of the Lakeland University graduating class of 2022.
begin today's event, we would first like to welcome LUJ's Dean, Dr. Alan Brender, to deliver the welcome speech. Today, for the first time, a president of Lakeland University is here in person to congratulate you graduates, as is the founding father of LUJ. The city government is also represented, and we have a special message from the United States Ambassador to Japan. For the first time, we will be graduating bachelor as well as associate degree students in this new facility in the historic region of Ryoko. We now have the pleasure of sharing a personalized video message from the U.S. Ambassador to Japan, Mr. Rom Emanuel. On behalf of everyone at the United States Embassy, I offer my heartiest congratulations to the newest graduates of Lakeland University, Japan. Unlike most graduating classes in history, you have endured a global pandemic. You experienced disruptions in your college education, unlike any other in recent memory. And I know that as a father of two students in universities. However, you did not give up. And facing that adversity has prepared you for the future. I know from experience that your tenacity and courage will serve you well in the years ahead. It is in times of failure, adversity, when we get knocked down and we pick ourselves up and put our right foot in front of our left foot, that those are the times that you learn most about what you're made of and your ability to handle and build a future. It's from adversity that we find success. It is not from success alone. We are pleased to introduce and welcome a representative from the Civil Award Office, Mr. Yasufumi Kibe. Lakeland Dai Japan Campus no Minasan, Konnichiwa. Congratulations on your graduation. We now have the pleasure of introducing LUJ's founder to present today's commencement address. About 30 centuries ago, a Hebrew philosopher was given a great responsibility by his king. Teach me to be wise, the king said, because my, my decisions affect so many. The philosopher's response to the king was that wisdom requires both knowledge and action. That king, whom we now know as Solomon, is regarded in history as perhaps the wisest, wisest ruler of all. Those elements of wisdom, acquiring knowledge, doing justice, and loving goodness, were the DNA of a wisdom tradition that would later inform the founding philosophy of the university whose diploma you will receive today. We would now like to introduce and welcome the president of Lakeland University, Dr. Beth Gordon who will first be presenting an honorary degree today. Paul Snowden studied modern and medieval languages at King's College, Cambridge. For the vast majority of his career, he has lived and worked in Japan as a university teacher and administrator, and author or editor of various dictionaries, textbooks, and other Japanese-related works. In recognition of your extraordinary contributions to teaching and learning, research and scholarship, student formation, international education, administrative leadership and university trusteeship, Lakeland University is pleased to confer upon Paul the Doctor of Humane Letters degree, honoris causa, with all of the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. part you guys have been waiting for. <laughs> by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, members of the Lakeland University graduating class of 2022, the Associate of Art degree and the Bachelor of Art degree, with all of the privileges and responsibilities thereto appertaining. You may move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations. Next up, a faculty member, Mr. Luis Poza, to present the 2021-2022 Outstanding Student Awards. This award is reserved for students who not only perform with academic excellence, but also participate in student activities and generally provide an outstanding service to the school and to the student body. 
we have the first ever Outstanding Student Award for a Bachelor of Arts degree graduate at Lakeland University, Japan, Mr. Simon Blondo. I come from a small city on the southwest coast of Sweden. The reason that I decided to come to this city was that I had spent time here in Tokyo before, and I have to say I had a darn good time. So when the opportunity came along to me to do my university studies here in the city that I love, much to my parents' dismay, I decided to root up my life and come here. Thank you so much for these past few years. It makes me proud of what we have all accomplished. But let's all bring this pride with us. I have some very brief closing remarks. I'm the only one standing between you and your social, so I'll make it very quick, I promise. As everyone has said, it would be remiss not to acknowledge the resilience and the grit that you've demonstrated over the past couple of years. Your academic experience certainly did not go as you planned, but you made it to the finish line. Each and every one of you figured out a way to make it to the finish line. Congratulations on your perseverance, and I look forward to seeing wherever your Lakeland experience takes you. I have no doubt you're going to make your alma mater proud. Congratulations. Now, I know what you're thinking. How the heck does a 36-year-old, three-time college dropout manage to move to the country that he's always loved since he was a little kid, be the first in his family to graduate, not only with an associate's, but with a bachelor's? One word, persistence. Nothing in this world take the place good old persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is practically a cliche. Education, unfortunately, will not. Because the world is full of educated fools. Persistence and determination alone are all powerful. And with that said, guys, this is Andy. Sign up for now. All graduated with his bachelor's. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.